A while back, I made a video about a Swedish tradition of dressing up as witches and going door to door asking for candy. In that video, I gave a brief summary of the witch trials that took place in Sweden between 1668 and 1676. In this video, I want to focus more on the trials themselves. If you mention witch trials, most people probably think of the Salem witch trials, as they arguably are the most famous. But the Salem witch trials are just another example of witch hysteria. During the Salem witch trials, more than 200 people were accused of witchcraft. It's estimated that 25 people lost their lives during the witch hysteria in Salem. 19 of those were executed by hanging, at least 5 people died in jail and one man was crushed to death for refusing to plead. But as witch hysteria were growing in places like Salem, it was decreasing in Europe where it had been running rampant. It's believed that the publication of Malleus Maleficarum in 1486 was the catalyst for witch hysteria. The book is a guide on how to identify, hunt, and interrogate witches. It labeled witchcraft as heresy, and it quickly became the go-to book for people trying to locate witches living among them. It's estimated that up to 80,000 people were put to death in Europe between the years 1500 and 1660. Compared to other countries in Europe, Sweden had few witch trials, in fact, it was even a bit of a rarity. That would change, however. During the worst of witch mania in Sweden, an estimated 400 people were executed for witchcraft in the country. One of the largest witch trials in the country is known as the Tiosoko Witch Trials, where it's said that 71 people were beheaded and then burned, all in a single day. These trials took place in the period of 1668 and 1676, an event that has gone down in history as the Great Noise. The Swedish witch hunts began in 1668 when a priest in Elvdalen Dalarna, Lars Elvius, interrogated a little shepherd girl named Jatrud Svensdotter, who was 12 years old at the time. In the autumn of 1667, Jatrud had been tending a herd of sheep with the shepherd boy Mats Nilsson. At some point they had a fight which would end with Jatrud beating Mats up. Probably with a wounded ego, he would later claim that Jatrud had led the sheep over eastern Dalelven by walking on the water. Jatrud was then interrogated by the priest. During these long interrogations, the priest would encourage her to say that she had indeed walked on water using magic that was given to her by the devil. The girl would eventually say that while she was living with her parents in the village of Lilhadal, a neighbor's maid had taken her to meet with the devil. According to the girl, the maid had taken her for a walk in 1663. During this walk, they had passed a crossroads where the maid had called out for the devil to meet with them. After that night, Jatrud would often visit Blokulla with the maid. This detail, however, only came after another boy, Erik Eriksson, who was 15 years old, claimed that he had a vision in the woods where he had seen Jatrud at Blaukulla with children that she had brought there to meet with the devil. Curiously, Erik only had to give his testimony once, and he was praised by the priest for revealing the whole affair. No one thought to question him. The so-called confession of Jatrud was the starting point of the witch hysteria in Sweden. The maid she had accused was a woman named Merit Jönsdotter, and she would become the first victim of the witch trials. After the accusations, Merit was called to court. 
She was urged to confess and to name whatever accomplices she might have, but she denied everything. A few alleged witnesses, one of which was Jatud's father, Sven, claimed that Marit had made him sick and exhausted by using him as a riding horse when she traveled to Blokula. It should be noted here that Marit used to be a maid at Sven's farm. After the passing of his wife, he intended to marry Marit, but he was discouraged when he had been beaten up by another one of her suitors. Shortly after that, Marit would leave the household. It isn't mentioned anywhere whether or not Marit was even remotely interested in marrying Sven or the other suitor. But given the time period, that isn't really surprising. Marit wasn't willing to admit to any wrongdoing. When Jatrud and another girl, Anna Ulfstotto, were called in to give testimony, Marit would answer their testimonies with questions. Such as, if she truly had been in Blokula, why didn't she know about it? Why would it be hidden from her? Every time they made an accusation, she would counter with a follow-up question. And after a while, Marit told Jatrud and the other girl to leave because she didn't want to look at them any longer. The next to give testimony was Marit's siblings, her younger sister and her younger brothers. Her little sister would claim that she had been taken to Blokula by riding backwards on a cow where her name had been written in the Book of the Devil. Her brother had said almost the exact same thing, except they claimed that it was their father who had taken them to Blokula. Her siblings and her mother would urge Marit to confess to save her soul, but Marit refused to admit to any wrongdoing, saying that she had no idea what they were talking about and that she wasn't the one who needed forgiveness. Marit's siblings would then turn and accuse other people of witchcraft. All in all, ten people were accused, one of which was a widow named Karin who also denied all accusations. On the 1st of April 1969, Marit Junstotto and the widow Karin were found guilty. However, they never pled guilty and they kept on denying the claims. This actually caused a dilemma for the court because Swedish law forbade the execution of anyone who had not confessed to their crime. It didn't matter if they were found guilty or not. If they hadn't confessed, they could not be executed. As both women refused to admit any guilt and they kept pleading their innocence, the court had a bit of a problem. It was decided that torture wasn't applicable in this case, but once the court realized that neither of these women knew about this part of the law, they came up with a plan to trick them into confessing which would then make it possible to execute them. The plan was to get priests to persuade the women by using religious arguments. The priest would tell the women that they were to be executed whether they confessed or not. But if they confessed, they would receive Holy Communion and go straight to heaven. If this was successful and the women did confess, they would be taken to the place of execution, which would be conducted shortly thereafter. However, if they refused to confess, the court would have no other option than to send them back to jail. The plan was put in motion. Marit and Karin were told that they could confess and receive communion, or they could deny it all. Both women chose the latter, and they kept denying the charges. This frustrated the authorities, but they had no choice but to escort the women back to prison. If you're wondering what happened to the children, Jatrud and Marit's siblings, they were flogged and then released. The other people who were accused were later acquitted. The trial against Marit was the starting point for the witch hysteria in Sweden and it would lead to the Mura witch trial in 1669. This is the most internationally famous Swedish witch trial. Reports of this trial would spread throughout Europe. There's even a German illustration of the trial 
and this is said to have had some influence on the Salem witch trials, which would take place 23 years later. During the Mura witch trials, 60 people were put on trial, 14 people, one man and 13 women, were sentenced to execution that same year. The national court revoked 11 death sentences and executed six women and one man by decapitation on May 19, 1669. This was common practice in Sweden. The alleged witches would be decapitated, then their bodies would be burned. So they weren't burned at the stake. I mentioned the trials at Tilsoko in the beginning of the video, which took place in 1675 in Tilsoko Parish in Sweden. It's the largest witch trial ever in Sweden, and these trials began because of the witch hysteria that was sweeping the country at the time. Approximately 100 people were accused, but it's unclear how many were convicted and not executed. All in all, 71 people lost their lives to the hysteria. 65 of these were women, which was roughly one-fifth of all women in the region at the time. The executions at Tilsöker were actually illegal, and they soon reached the capital. You see, neither the commission nor any local courts had the right to conduct any executions. If someone was sentenced to be executed, that sentence had to be reported to the higher court before they could be carried out. But the high court usually only confirmed a minority of the death sentences, which is probably why it wasn't reported. In truth, Tilsoker's problem wasn't witches. Rather, it was a priest that was on a power trip. The Great Noise took off in 1668 and would end in 1676. Given the events in Tilsoko in 1675, it's possible that that was a catalyst for the end of the trials. It wasn't until 1676 that it ended, when a woman named Malin Matstotto were executed in Stockholm. After her death, the authorities proved that the child witnesses had been lying, and that her sentencing was a mistake. You're probably wondering what happened to Marit. Well, throughout the Great Noise, she remained in prison. She was constantly visited by priests who attempted to brainwash and or trick her into confessing. She never did. Marit was kept imprisoned for four years and she never stopped declaring her innocence. And she flat out refused to confess to any crime. Marit's refusal to confess any guilt had been noticed. People had realized that if they refused to confess, they could escape a death sentence. However, this would also be noticed by the court who then declared Marit guilty of sorcery and sentenced her to be decapitated and burned. The court stated that her mere denial cannot help her nor free her from the life sentence. In the end, Marit and 34 other people, one of which was Marit's younger sister, all received a death sentence in 1672. The widow Karin, however, was released. In Tilsoko, many of the people convicted were convicted on the testimonies of children, mostly young boys, like most of the witch trials at the time. After the authorities had priests all over the country declare that all witches had been driven out of the country, those young boys in Tilsoko were mysteriously found with their throats cut which means that the tragedies of Tilsoko didn't stop just because the witch trials did. If you go back to how all of this started, it's easy to point the finger at Yatrud, as her accusation and the trial that followed is seen as the catalyst for the witch mania that struck Sweden. But I actually want to take it a step further and look at the boy who first accused Jatrud. Remember, Jatrud was actually the first person accused of witchcraft. 
and with hindsight, it's pretty easy to see that she was coerced by the priest to give a false confession. Now, it is important to remember they were children, so it's hard to judge them too harshly. Today, I would imagine that most people would question the legitimacy of Yatrud's confession and question whether or not she was coached to say the things that she did. And also, since most of the alleged witches were convicted based on testimonies of children, one might also wonder if those children were coached. In the case of the Tulsoka trials, it definitely seems that way. I want to end this video with one final note. As the saying goes, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. Now, I don't think that witch trials are gonna make a comeback, but I do think that the kind of hysteria that is at the root of these events is something that we should be more cautious of, especially in the climate that we live in today with social media and how easy it seems to be for people to just pile on on an event even though they don't know all the facts. They're just having a hysteric reaction to it. As such, the witch trials that took place all over the world is very much a dark chapter in our history, but it's one that absolutely needs to be remembered.